Hello friends, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Every Thursday afternoon, 1 to 1.30 p.m. I'm your host, Danilo Cuellar, and today we will be discussing July 4th, the holiday of barbaric nationalism and the failure of collectivism. This is from my recent blog post uh, entitled, by the same name, July 4th, the holiday of barbaric nationalism. Okay, so July 4th is revered as our nation's birthday and is regarded as one of the greatest celebrations of freedom and independence. Many Americans have spent it watching the state-subsidized World Cup, eating charcoal barbecued meat, drinking mind-numbing beer, partaking in an American flag decorated cake, saluting a piece of red, white, and blue cloth symbolic of our oppressors, watching the repulsive Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, watching fireworks displays funded by stolen taxes, and by shouting, quote, America is number one, freedom! The level of unthinking barbaric nationalism steeped in this day rivals the Super Bowl. If ever there was an accurate portrayal of the witless brutishness that infects the masses of a democracy, this would be it. Men acting as individuals are creative geniuses. Men acting as a collective mob become callous, cruel, and horrific. The collective is a headless beast that acts without recourse to logic and reason. Verily, these Socratic ideals are only capable of the individual. When we advocate for any nation-state, we become the willing executioners of philosophy upon the altar of, quote, government and the myth of authority. Americans would do well to study true history and Austrian economics. These are painful endeavors precisely because they reveal the true nature of our current enslaved state. When any aspect of the carefully constructed status lie, is examined under the microscope of logic. Its flimsy house of cards nature is revealed. Many would soon sooner cling tightly to their comfortable lies than pursue painful truths. This is the path of least resistance and is entirely understandable. However, this soft obedience is exactly how we have degenerated into a world of central bank fiat currency, imperialistic warfare, parasitic welfare, rule by mob, thieving taxation, drowning debt, legal plunder, regulatory capture, sovereign immunity, sociopathic politicians, suffocating small businesses at the expense of politically connected corporate whores, etc. We are enduring what we have heretofore allowed, nothing more and nothing less. The violence, corruption, and abuse stops when we stop feeding it with our attention and participation. The state is a parasite that only continues to thrive because we have fabricated intricate moralizations and pious justifications for its existence. It is a balloon that is held above us by our collective hot air. It will end the moment when we remove our precious breath. It will end the moment when we scratch it off our neck and no sooner. I end with a quote by Doug Stanhope, the um, stand-up comedian, very uh, libertarian-minded. Nationalism does nothing but teach you how to hate people that you never met. And all of a sudden, you take pride in accomplishments you had no part in whatsoever. And you brag about. And the Americans will go, fuck the French. Fuck the French. If we hadn't saved their ass in two world wars, they'd be speaking German right now. And you go, oh, was that us? Was that me and you? I checked my pants. There's no mudstains on my knees from when we were garroting krauts in the trenches at Verdun. I think we didn't do anything but watch sports bloopers while we got hammered. I think we should shut the fuck up. <laughs>
It's a little bit crass, but you get the point. <laughs> so, uh, July 4th, a very interesting holiday, a very um, contradictory holiday and um, hypocritical holiday. Since it's, uh, we, we, we have to think about, you know, what exactly we celebrating when we say freedom, right? This is a word that's been uh, thrown around, uh, you know, freely and uh, without any uh, concern for what it actually means. Um, so freedom to someone uh, living in the, let's say, at the beginning of this country, let's say, um, you know, around... 17, uh, what was the Constitution? 1789, I think when the Constitution was written. written. Um, freedom at that time is vastly different <laughs> from what we consider to be <laughs> freedom today, okay? <laughs> vastly different, all right? Um, so we have to realize that the, the, the basis or the, uh, the reasons that the early colonists, American colonists, um, decided to rebel and revolt against the British crown were basically um, um, a 3% tax <laughs> on their uh, well-being, which, which was mostly like a, uh, I think it was just mostly a, a tea tax, maybe a stamp tax, but it, it, was, it was minuscule, all right? It's negligible. <laughs> and that was enough to anger the colonists into revolt, right? 3%. <laughs> okay. Now, consider, fast forward to today, what level of taxation we are all, well, most of us, the uh, you know, working, middle class, productive, industrious of us, um, the ones who actually produce the wealth, right? Consider how much we are taxed today, right? So... 3% to today, which is close to half, about 50%, right? Maybe a little bit less. So we work about one-third of the year for free, all right? <laughs> for free. All that money, whatever you make, goes towards income tax, and, you know, whatever other tax, you know, sales tax, gas tax, property tax, you know, um, all the multitude of taxes that are just um, so complex that they, uh, they require a separate, a separate, quote, profession, which I don't really believe is a profession since, you know, what do you, you know, do you, do you call uh, somebody who works for the mafia? Is that a profession, right? <laughs> no, it's an accomplice, right? It's an accomplice in crime. So, so... Um, the people who work for the IRS and, uh, you know, assist in the extortion of, um, of the property of others who have rightfully earned it. Um, they're the ones that enforce and carry out these, um, these ridiculous uh, forms of plunder, also known as legal plunder, um, on the citizenry, right? So we work a third of the year, three to four months, depending, three to four months for free. Now, what an insult that is. Now, think about what that money is being spent on, okay? Now, most people would like to delude themselves into believing that that money in the form of taxes or theft, <laughs> better, better described, is going towards something that we would consider useful, right? That the government provides, whereas, you know, nothing that the government provides is actually um, useful because, um, you know, it's a monopoly. A monopoly has no feedback mechanism, so it has no way to efficiently allocate resources, right? So there is really no um, um, beneficial use for um, um, government stolen funds, stolen, stolen from the people. Um, so, so that money, primarily, you look at, you know, what the annual budget is and what, what, it, what they spend uh, most of this um, stolen funds on, and uh, the majority is towards um, murder, okay? Also known as the war on terror, right? Imperialism, overseas wars, uh, occupations, invasions of, uh, of uh, innocent countries, of, um, you know, drone strikes, 
on weddings and um, you know family reunions, family gatherings, right? Um, you know, you have <laughs> nuclear weapons, you have you know Apache helicopters, stealth bombers, you know, all the advanced and uh, super expensive and completely unnecessary equipment that goes into military spending. You know, they call it defense spending, but of course that's one of the uh, one of the double speak of uh, of uh, <laughs> the uh, government programs. You know, you can basically dis you can basically understand what the reality of any government program is by examining the name. All right, and basically the easiest way to do that to understand it is to turn it on its head, right? And that would be the reality, right? So defense spending is more accurately called offense spending, right? Or aggression or invasions, right? So, you know, Affordable Care Act, known as Obamacare, right? Affordable, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's going to be astronomical, okay? It's going to destroy small businesses. It's going to raise the premiums on many, many people. And it's going to produce um, many more dependents on... Um, on the state, all right? You know, you look at uh, Department of Education, right? Of course, it's the Department of Indoctrination. You look at, you look at the, um, you know, National Defense Authorization Act, right? Which is more accurately described as, um, you know, uh, indefinite detention, kidnapping, and, uh, you know, caging for no, no reason or, you know, jury trial necessary is completely on suspicion, right? So, so um, taxation, also taxation, is theft, right, every time. So, so that's one way to look at um, what our government is spending, is spending the money on, you know, is warfare. And that's, that's, the, major, that's the major part, okay? So I'm sorry, but that tax money is not going towards roads, it's not going towards bridges, it's not going towards tunnels, it's not going towards infrastructure of any kind that is useful to the citizenry in any respect, okay? The majority of it is going towards war and destruction and death and murder. That's what it is going for, right? That is basically the function of the state, right? Is to, um, is to enforce its control, right? And and the greater its control, right, the more successful the state, right? So, you know, as uh, I think it's Randolph Byrne, he said, uh, war is the health of the state, right? And this is very true. Whenever there's warfare, whenever there's uh, imperialism and uh, aggression, um, there's more spending, and it basically empowers the politicians even more. And, and um, you know, they, they try through propaganda, through, uh, through the media to suppress, um, they often suppress dissent, right, in the form of uh, right now the NDAA and the Patriot Act, they suppress dissent from the citizenry and, um, and just promote the propaganda of war, in this case the war on terror, right, <laughs> which is uh, incidentally, uh, you know, one of the gravest um, violations of human rights and human liberties in history, right, it's one of the greatest genocides is our uh, continuous occupation in the Middle East, since for decades, many, many decades now, even way before 9-11. You know, 9-11 just uh, was like, uh, you know, a, a, a spark that lit the powder keg <laughs> of fear, of mass fear in the people. And so now, you know, many more of the people are supporting the, uh, the overseas murder of, uh, of innocent foreigners, many of whom are women and children, incidentally. So, so, so yeah, this is, this is the comparison of today as compared to Independence Day of what we, what we celebrate freedom, you know, we celebrate freedom. So basically, we are celebrating the freedom that we no longer have, right? We are celebrating um, <laughs> the, the lack of freedom, <laughs> that is to say, that's what we are celebrating. And it's kind of hypocritical to celebrate such a... Uh, such a dismal thing. So it's, it's really a pointless holiday. It's, it's taking pride in one's own enslavement. It's taking pride in the violent monopoly that is the state. Okay. Um, and by the way, some, some people say, well, taxation is, um, you know, 
you know, they say they justify taxation because we get the roads. You know, first of all, of course, we do, you know, the roads are <laughs> not, you know, for the most part, funded by taxation. For the, for the most part, they're funded by, you know, if they, they fund wars. But for those people that are still deluded into thinking that they do fund uh, the roads, bridges, and tunnels, you know, say, well, well, we have roads, right? We, you know, so that makes taxation good, okay? So the same argument can be made uh, if you say um, rape is okay because you get a baby. All right? <laughs> you get that? <laughs> it's like saying, you know, I'm going to invade your house, ransack your belongings, steal whatever I want, and I'll leave you a toaster. Because we all need toasters, right? Because we all need toast. Who doesn't need toast? <laughs> Who doesn't need toast, right? <laughs> so the, um, the problem, the immorality, is not in the ends. The immorality is in the means, right? So, so that's one thing we have to keep in mind, that, you know, to, uh, to say that... Uh, you know, the great works of human history, right? The, the pyramids, the sphinx, the, you know, I don't know, this, um, whatever great works, if they were produced on the backs of slaves, it doesn't make them great works at all in any respect. It makes them symbols of oppression and servitude, involuntary servitude, <laughs> okay? It's like saying, if I were to subjugate you, and force you to tend to my garden and make it beautiful and harvest my, you know, harvest my crops. And then I say, look, we have a, a bounty, we have a feast. My garden looks beautiful. See that? Your slavery was justified. <laughs> you know? The, the black slaves of the, of the 1800s were justified because the cotton was picked. And so, how can you argue with that? <laughs> Which is completely uh, absurd logic. Um, you know, we, we, don't, we don't look at the effects of an action. Okay? We look at the means. I mean, the effects are also important, but you look at the means. How did you, what path did you take to get there? Right? It's very, very important. So, so taxation um, is, is theft. It's theft of another man's property. Okay, and... Uh, and that's the very thing that the, the colonists were rebelling against, the British crown. And, and the fact that we are inundated, we are drowning in taxation. We are drowning in debt. Okay? Um, and, and by the way, a, a, a nation that tries to tax itself into prosperity is completely pointless and ridiculous. It's like trying to, it's like trying, it's like standing in a bucket and trying to lift your, lift up the bucket. Okay, it's trying, it's like if it's like a snake attempting to satisfy its appetite by eating its own tail. All right, it's entirely self-destructive. Okay, prosperity of a nation does not hinge upon theft from the industrious. Okay, prosperity hinges upon allowing the industrious to create and to innovate, okay? Because that's where, that's where the beauty happens. That's where the wonder happens. <laughs> that's where all the beautiful things that we enjoy and appreciate today, all the wonderful inventions of capitalism. Yes, I said the word capitalism. There's a, there's a very big misunderstanding of what capitalism actually is. You know, capitalism, you know, we, people look at, what's happening today and they said look at capitalism that's the free market it's failing but that all the only thing that that demonstrates is a fundamental misunderstanding of uh, f free markets and capitalism okay simply put capitalism is just free and voluntary trade between peaceful individuals right same thing free market right free and voluntary trade between peaceful individuals it's like I have five dollars and you have a sandwich and I want the sandwich more than I want my five dollars, okay? And the man who's selling the sandwich wants my five dollars more than he wants the sandwich. We trade, win-win situation. Win-win. All right, that's the key. <laughs> Anything else, there's no force in that, right? There's no completely voluntary, you know, the transaction would not have happened if it was not voluntary. Why, why would it happen unless, you know, it was forced, right? 
and uh, any time that um, that government involves itself in, in peaceful transactions, the application of force is introduced and it smears and blurs that beautiful interaction, okay? And all of a sudden it becomes a win-lose, okay? It becomes a man with a gun holding up another man and taking his money, okay? That is a win-lose. Only one party benefits, okay? Capitalism and free markets, and laissez, you can also call it laissez-faire capitalism, is win-win all the time, okay? People always want to engage in free and voluntary trade. It's the nature of, it's the nature of a community. It's the nature of humanity. That's how we are, you know? People always try to, we always try to avoid conflict whenever possible, right? You, uh, you know, you look at, um, I've read, I read a bunch of articles about schools, you know, they, they, they stop trying to impose on themselves, on, you know, the, um, the authority figures, you know, say the monitors, the teachers, stop trying to impose their rules and, and trying to control what the kids are doing, right? And all of a sudden the kids invent their own games and they have a great time, right? <laughs> There's no fun <laughs> that, can, that can be had in authoritarianism, in control, okay? So the most beautiful things that we've come to appreciate have sprung out of capitalism and free markets. So what we have today is not capitalism. So what is it? What we have today is more accurately called corporate fascism, okay? It's the merger of state and corporate power, all right? State and corporate power. This is, this is very important to understand. They, they go hand in hand. And also, of course, central banks are in there too. You know, central banks, they uh, provide liquidity and, uh, you know, fascistic control of the uh, monetary system, um, which is, of course, the, also the, definitely le leads to the same conclusion of uh, enslavement of the citizenry and the population of the people. Um, so, so corporate fascism, it's, it, you know, some people call it crony capitalism. I don't really like to call it crony capitalism because, um, you know, it, it, it calling what we have today crony capitalism is the same way as calling rape crony lovemaking. <laughs> All right. They shouldn't even be mentioned in the same breath, okay? They should be completely separate terms, completely, entirely separate terms. You know, the fact that capitalism is an ism <laughs> is even very confusing because once you say capitalism, then you're associating that with socialism, with communism, with, you know, an oligarchy, with an aristocracy, with a, with a monarchy, you know, with fascism, and they are entirely entirely separate and well all of those that I just mentioned are entirely separate from true capitalism uh, which is um, it's just you know true capitalism is synonymous with an synonymous with anarchy with volunteerism with free markets right it's all synonymous um, it's basically people engaging in trade in business transactions without state interference right without government meddling and in intervention um, so so yeah they have to be they have to be kept separate it's 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 very unfortunate when people uh, misconstrue these things and you know you see people go down on Wall Street and you know they protest uh, you know the uh, the Wall Street protests you know the one percent we are the 99 percent you know all that crap um, and I guess that movement was uh, helpful in that it brought certain issues to light that um, previously were not thought about. However, uh, the problem with protesting is that, um, you know, it's kind of, I, I really believe it's kind of pointless because if you, if you really understand these concepts, I think you will also understand that the best way to spread these concepts is not to go out and put your life on the line and, and uh, you know, put your, put your, you know, lay down in a train tracks or hug a tree or, you know, do any of those, um, you know, ridiculous things. The, the, the true way that we can affect change is by talking to your friends and family, by talking to your fellow man, by blogging, by writing about it, by making videos, by talking about it, by exuding 
your philosophy. Okay, because that way it will be unmistakable, right? You know, you have to embody what you are espousing. You know, you have to make it so that it is so crystal clear what you are talking about. And, and a lot of these people that have gone to these um, Wall Street protests, it is quite clear that, don't, that they don't understand what is happening and they don't understand who, um, they don't understand the true nature of, of government. And it's quite sad, you know, to go out there and they, uh, you know, they say, capitalism is, this is capitalism, this is exploitation, this is, uh, <laughs> you got to pay your fair share, you know, tax them more. <laughs> Yeah, right. So uh you know the theft theft is not enough, right? We have to we have to steal more, right? So it's like it's like you know tax slaves attacking other tax slaves. You know, slaves on slave for not um uh criticizing other slaves for not contributing their their quote fair share, right? Whereas we the real question is should we even have masters, right? Not not you know which master we should be voting for. It's, should we even have masters at all? That's the true question. All right, so, so for this reason, I don't, I don't really advocate going to protest. I don't really advocate putting your life on the line, you know, and, and uh, potentially getting arrested or um, even worse, hurt or killed. You know, that will do nothing for spreading the message of freedom and liberty and um, voluntarism and free markets. That will do nothing, okay? You will not be a martyr. Okay, so, so stick to educating people, okay, because the revolution, the true revolution is in the mind, okay. It's not with the gun, it's not with the sword, it's with the mind. Because just imagine, we are 300 mil what are we, 313 million people. In the United States, 313 million people, okay? And we feel obligated to forfeit one-third of our annual income to a group of sociopathic, twisted, perverse old men who claim the, the moral right to rule over all of us. Okay, we forfeit our property, the fruits of our labor, our blood, sweat, and tears to them. And what will they do with it? Where will they spend it? Can you spend it better than them? Because basically what they're saying is, you don't know, you're, you're not to be trusted with your own money. You should give it to us. It doesn't belong to you, even if you earned it. It belongs to us. And essentially what that means is your labor belongs to us. That's essentially what an income tax is, is that your labor is our property. Is our, we own you. We own your labor. And we get to decide how much, arbitrary, how, how much of an arbitrary amount to return to you. Okay? And... <laughs> It doesn't make sense for a few hundred or let's say a thousand people on Capitol Hill, you know, in the cabinet, vice president, president, the House of Representatives, the senators, the judges, you know. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. There's about a thousand, let's say a thousand people. How can 313 million people feel obligated to obey the whims of a thousand sociopaths? Okay? It's all in the mind. It requires no violence. It just requires the slow brush fire of awareness and knowledge and this starts with philosophy so just wanted to say a quick note this is about um, the barbarity the barbarousness of Independence Day nationalism patriotism okay statism in general statism is violence politics is violence Anything associated with government is violent. It's force. It's aggression. There is nothing intelligent or witty or wise about government. All right. 
And once you understand that, you will understand that it is not only unnecessary, but genuinely counterproductive. So I hope you'll take, it, take that into account. Uh, the next time you see another flag um, waving in the street or on a flagpole. All right, well, uh, I should wrap that up. Um, this is Danilo Cuellar from peacefinarchism.com. Uh, this is on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Uh, wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.